Welcome to the Food and Wine channel. I'm Karen. Today we are at the gorgeous Southern Sun Waterfront Hotel. With me I have the executive chef of the Cullinan, Lindsay Ben. Welcome, Lindsay. Thank you. Thank you so much for speaking to us. Okay. Tell us what is your background? How did you journey on to become the executive chef of the Cullinan? I think from a young age, you know, at home, being a... a being a family, you know, fairly small family, and mom always working and needed a bit of help. She used to come home from work and had to cook. So I think I started out every Sunday first, working a little bit in the kitchen mm -hmm. on a Sunday with her. And then, uh, surprising her, when she would come home with a meal that's cooked already, so it would take some stress off of her for the week. What a good son. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so. Would you say that you've started, that was your inspiration, and then what has taken your journey further into actually pursuing a career as a chef? Yeah, I think um, hanging on mom's, uh, on mom's apron as, as, a, as a young kid, you know, learning, learning the ropes from her. Uh, I think Sunday roast was a big thing in our, in our house, so uh, it started from there. Uh, I, I was in the Scouts. And of course, in the scouts, also you have to when you go camping, you have to cook, and uh, I was sort of the best cook in the scouts, and uh, I had to cook for everybody when we went camping. So I think it's sort of from a young age from there. I think the kindness of trying to help my mom out eventually sort of saw me in the position that I am today. So it's a passion that started from a young age already. And where did you do your training? Where did your training begin? Uh, I worked with Bill Stafford. Mm -hmm. Studied with Bill Stafford, where he gave us an opportunity to study in the morning and work in his kitchen at night. Uh, of course, times were tough at those times, you know. So you, you had to sort of gain experience at the same time. And um, working with him gave me that experience of studying in the morning, and then of course, you know, having the opportunity to go work in a five-star kitchen restaurant at night. And so yeah. How long good. have you been in the industry? Uh, plus minus 23 years now. That's a lifetime. Small lifetime. Small lifetime, small but life. a lifetime. Maybe. A small lifetime. So you've learned a lot as you've come up yes. the ranks and you've taken a while to get to where you are at. And yes. what exactly is your niche? What's your style? Do you have a style of cooking? Is there something specifically that you like to do, you know, those Sunday roasts or is there something else that you prefer or what's your kind of style? I like food to be done properly. In whichever style you are doing it, mm -hmm. do it properly. Don't substitute and make it something that you think it might work and it might not work, especially when you're busy entertaining people because mm -hmm. it can make you look like a fool. Mm -hmm. Try and stick to recipes if you can when you're entertaining, but when you're on your own experiment, you know, with maybe your immediate family or the, your immediate chefs in the kitchen before trying to sell it out into the market and right. make yourself look like a fool. Um, I don't particularly have one style. I enjoy cooking, so, um, but I like pushing the envelope with food. I like to evolve sometimes with my food. And with the times, I like, uh, like Asian foods. But then again, I, I enjoy classic roast. Yeah. Coming from mom's kitchen, of yes. course. Um, but yeah, for me, anything. If you do a good roast chicken, do, it, do a good roast chicken. Right. And if you do a good curry, do a good curry. Whatever you do, do it the best. Wonderful. That's what I always tell my chefs. You know, whatever you do, give me your best. Don't do it half mass. Do it, mm. do it the proper way. Don't so substitute. What's a day in your kitchen like as the executive chef? Starting at six o'clock in the morning. Wow. Um, patrolling the kitchen, I suppose. Checking up on staff, making sure they're all they're all on duty, and um, you know the, the usual checks, uniform checks. Hygiene checks. Then you go into the buffet. You do your your product checks. You know, make sure that the standards is all in place. Um, get back. Then you start looking at your days. You know, agenda. What you need to you prioritize. Where you need to be and where you don't need to be. Um, of course, the diary does help you, but sometimes you have to go back and give people a call and saying that something has popped up. And being uh, being with Soko son, it yes. uh, can be a little bit challenging at times because. We get things that pop up immediately and we have to uh, attend the meeting or at times it's difficult. So yeah, the day comprises of about a 14, 16 hour day. Wow. Um, yeah, a lot of people still 
people people have a tendency to think that if you executive shift, you don't work those yeah. hours because you on sort of the top. Um, for me, it's different. I still work those hours because I have a lot of passion for what I do. So also, you teaching the younger guys that you know they need to they need to check on everything in order for you to be one of the top shifts from one of the better establishments in the country. You need to the executive shift needs to be constantly there because he's it's his name at the end yeah. of the day. And um, he needs to drive the team, and he needs to lead from the front and have, you know, be the example for the team. Yeah. What I always say, it's the future of the hospitality industry of South Africa, and we need to look after that. Wonderful. As you're saying, part of training, you've been mentoring a candidate for the Cape Legends Into yes. Hotel Challenge. Tell us a bit more about the process in choosing your candidate. Um, Bradley Harry has got a lot of potential. Um, he's a good candidate. He understands. He can read recipes. He can manage. He's still got a lot of more years to go yes. as far as managing is concerned. Um, when I say manage, he can manage small challenges for me. All right. Uh, he needs to still learn how to manage kitchens and brigades and how to work with people. So eventually, he will get there. But when I give him a task to do and I show him how to do it, he generally gets ten out of ten. Right. So that's a good, so that's why I've chosen him as the candidate for this. He's also coming back from a previously disadvantaged background, so giving him an opportunity, you know, for me it was the same. So I'm basically giving back to the, to the hospitality industry, also by giving the younger guys, nurturing them, mentoring them um, to make the right decisions and uh, to grow as a chef. And one day also to have that pot of gold. Is this his first time entering a competition? He has entered other competitions before, but not with us at Soho Sun. I think we in his prior hotels or restaurants he has been. I think he has entered. Um, but yeah. What would you like for him to take away from this experience and your mentoring? I think he needs to he needs to grasp the the caliber that he's entering into as a young chef that in order for him to grow, he needs to absorb this and he needs to make it also. It can be challenging. Yeah. And it's quite daunting on them at times. Um, so he is a little bit nervous. Um, we will be, he will be cooking for Michelin star chefs on Thursday night right. uh, for the Good Food and Wine show. I've uh, told wow. him that uh, they will be coming for dinner to the Cullinan and uh, I'll be overseeing the dinner, of course. But he'll be doing all the prep, he'll be doing all the dishes, I'll be helping him with the platings and the service and um, what he needs to work on. And uh, we'll be getting the marks from them at the end of the night. So So this is a test before the test initially. It's a test before the test. Wonderful. I like to throw them in on the deep side and see if they can swim. So what exactly can we expect from the Cardinal Hotel? What are you going to put forward? I think uh, the phrase second to none comes to mind, we always want to be the champions. Right. And uh, we'll want to take first prize. And if not, we will be back next year to take With it away. With a vengeance. <laughs> prize it from our prize. <laughs> and then a word of warning to your competitors. What would you like them to know? It's winter, there's a storm coming. <laughs> wonderful. <laughs> Thank you so much for your time. And uh, it's you. been wonderful speaking to you. Thank you very much. And all the best for the contest. Thank you.